Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. This is Dr. Me at the Actuarial Academy, and we are getting ready to work a very interesting problem involving the sample variance, S squared. So we have n random variables distributed as a normal distribution, and the sample variance is defined to be given by this quantity here, should be familiar, and we like to show that the expected value of that, of S squared, that is the sample variance is actually equal to the population variance, sigma squared. And we'd also like to compute the variance of S squared. Uh, just a few comments. So you'll notice that these data points here, x1 through xn, are IID normal, mean mu, and variance sigma squared. IID stands for independent and identically distributed. So even if they weren't normally distributed, the expected value of S squared is still sigma squared. Okay, uh, but you, we will see that it makes the problem easier to solve um, with this with this with this assumption. And we're also going to compute the variance of S squared under this assumption as well. Uh, so let's let's look at a fact here. If x sub i are i d normal with mean mu and variance sigma squared, then this quantity here, n minus one times s squared over sigma squared, is actually distributed as a chi square distribution with n minus one degrees of freedom. And further, the expected value of a chi square distribution, sorry, excuse me, a chi squared random variable with n minus one degrees of freedom is actually equal to the degrees of freedom in minus one. Uh, the variance of a chi-square random variable is equal to twice its degrees of freedom. So for part A, showing that the expected value of s squared is equal to sigma squared, we're going to do it uh, a hard way first, and then we'll do it the easy way. Okay, And so they will both be instructional. So to do it the hard way first, we would first like to show the following, that the sum of xi minus mu squared, uh, and we're not going to write the the index of summation here, i is equal to 1 to n, it's understood to be the same uh, for all here, but we're first going to show this, because this is going to be a little trick that's actually going to help us show that the expected value of s squared is equal to sigma squared. So to this end, we will actually write out the sum of xi minus mu quantity squared is equal to, and we'll use the little add and subtract trick here, where we subtract out x bar, and then we add it right back, we do this, so we've subtracted and added x bar in, so we really haven't changed the expression. And this is equal to the sum of xi minus x bar quantity squared plus 2 times x sub i minus x bar, x bar minus mu plus x bar minus mu quantity squared. And this just comes from the fact that, say, if you have a binomial a plus b, that's just equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, where a represents the x sub i minus x bar, and b represents x bar minus mu. So applying that to this gets you that result. So nothing tricky there. And this is equal to the sum of x sub i minus x bar squared plus 2 times x bar minus mu, and we're just going to pass the sum through here, sum of x sub i minus x bar, plus n, and I'll write it down here, I'm running out of room, x bar minus mu squared, which is equal to the sum of x sub i minus x bar squared plus n times x bar 
r minus mu quantity squared. And the reason is, is because this t term right here, actually sum of x sub i here is equal to, after you pass the sum through, n times x bar. So essentially this whole term here goes to zero. So this entire piece just goes to zero, leaving you with the sum of x sub i minus x bar squared plus n times x bar minus mu squared, as we have it written there. Okay. Now we have a nice representation, the summation of x sub i minus x bar squared, which is precisely what we have here. So if we want to solve for this piece here, we would just take uh, this term here minus this term here. So let me write that out, what I'm describing here. So the expected value then of s squared is just equal to the expected value of the summation of x sub i minus x bar quantity squared divided by n minus 1. So I'm just rewriting s squared. Nothing new here. But in this next step here, for the summation of x sub i minus x bar here, which is this piece given here, I will rewrite that as, and I'm also going to pull out the 1 over n minus 1, and this will just be the expected value of the summation of x sub i minus mu squared, which comes from here, minus n times the expected value, we still have to pass the expected value through, x bar minus mu quantity squared. And that, that's from here. Again, just solving for this piece here and substituting in for here, we get this. So convince yourself of that. And then, we, of course, we pass the expectation operator through. And I realize that I still have the expectation out here. So I don't need that quite yet. So that would just be times n still. Kind of a little too anxious there. Okay, now we can pass the expected value through. This would be equal to 1 over n minus 1. And now I'll do like this, sum of the expected value of x sub i minus mu squared minus n times expected value of x bar minus mu squared. And this really should be an n, not an h. Okay, looks a little better there. And we end the full brace like that. Now, this is then equal to 1 over n minus 1 times the sum. Okay, this is sigma squared. The expected value of x sub i minus mu squared is nothing but sigma squared. And we're going to sum it up n times, okay, minus n times. This is the variance of x bar. So that's the variance of x bar, which then and I'm going to have to go to the next page, unfortunately, is equal to 1 over n minus 1 times n times sigma squared, because we were summing that variance n times, minus n times sigma squared over n, because the variance of x bar is equal to sigma squared over n. And this is just equal to 1 over n minus 1 times n minus 1 times sigma squared, which is just sigma squared. And that shows that the expected value of s squared is equal to sigma squared. Now we didn't use the fact that x1 through xn are iid normal with mean mu and sigma squared. This is in general always true. Now had we used this assumption it would have made uh, things a little bit easier and it was given to us that they actually were iid normal, but I just wanted to show you that it doesn't have to be normally distributed for the expected value of s squared to be an unbiased estimator for sigma squared. Okay, so this is kind of an added bonus on how you could work this problem out. But if you do know that x1 through xn are iid normal, then we we know this piece right here is true. That n minus 1 divided by s squared, sorry, n minus 1 times s squared divided by sigma squared is distributed as a chi-square distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. Okay, so that actually helps us out. And let me show you how. 
working this out here. So let me just reproduce that. So we know that n minus 1 times s squared divided by sigma squared is distributed as a chi-square with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. And we also know that the expected value, kind of using, I think, loose notation here, but the expected value of a chi-square random variable is actually equal to its degrees of freedom, which is n minus 1. So that means that the expected value of n minus 1 times s squared over sigma squared should be equal to n minus 1 because this is distributed as a chi-square with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. Again, under the assumption that we that x1 through xn are iid normal with mean mu sigma squared. So that's the assumption we're using now. Well, just using a little bit of algebra then, we immediately get that the expected value of s squared then uh, we can actually factor out sigma squared here and an n minus 1 and we're just left with sigma squared over n minus 1 here times that n minus 1 and just leaves us with our desired answer. Okay, so the expected value of s squared is sigma squared. A lot easier if you make that assumption that the x1 through xn are iid. Well we can do a similar trick for part b. So I'm not going to work part b out uh, in its fullest content because it's a lot difficult, a lot more difficult. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and actually use this assumption here for convenience and do a similar trick. Um, I'm going to be a little bit more complete though. So the variance here, so going back up to this, if we know this quantity is distributed as a chi-square, we already talked about its expected value. Well the variance then it's actually equal to twice the degrees of freedom. Okay, and we're going to use that trick right here. So then the variance of n minus 1 times s squared divided by sigma squared, and I'm just going to work this out a little bit. This is a constant n minus 1 divided by sigma squared, just like it was here. But here, since we're taking the variance, we have to square it now times the variance of s squared, which we're trying to find. Well, that's equal to twice the degrees of freedom from what we learned up here. And then from that, we get that the variance of s squared, just using algebra, is equal to 2 sigma to the fourth divided by n minus 1. Convince yourself of that. So that if you actually work out the algebra here, you multiply by sigma squared, excuse me, sigma to the fourth here, and divide by n minus one squared, you'll actually get two times sigma to the fourth power divided by n minus one. Now there's probably a similar type of trick you can do using algebra to work this out directly, but it, it, actually there is, I know there is, but it's a little bit more complicated and uh, beyond the scope of just a little actual academy video, so let's just resort to this uh, relying on the assumption to make our life a little easier um, with the understanding that we could work it out in greater detail using algebra uh, but I'd just rather just use this trick here and leave it at that so thank you very much